This, this is the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Find us on air, online, on mobile, and on your smart speaker. Please subscribe at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert. 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 Now, here's the host of Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert. Nick Miles. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast, this is America's Car Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, and on smart speaker. This is where two million Americans get their automotive news. I am Nick Miles, and of course, you are Truck Girl Jen. That's right. Your name is carved on the shelf of a, uh, or on the bench of a pizza restaurant in Wyoming. Yeah, that's what I heard. Jack Jackson is it Jacksonville, Wyoming? Jackson Hall. Jackson Hall. I don't know, but and you didn't do it. No. <laughs> so either you've got a crazed fan in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, or <laughs> you sleepwalk a very long way. I know, or someone's just pretending to be me. What That's you, scary. What do you think the answer is? <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we had Anton Wallman, who is on our show. Send us a note, and he was in this uh, hotel. Uh, no, he was in this pizza. It's a pizza, pizza place. Pizza place. Yeah. And he said, "Oh yeah, guess what? Uh, I found this on the pizza restaurant." No, he asked. Yeah, he asked me if I've been there, and I'm like, I haven't been to Wyoming in like years. So right. no, it wasn't me. There you go. All right, packed show for you today. Uh, we got lots going on. I'll give you a quick rundown. You should be really excited. Coming up in a second or so, we'll talk to Perry Stern. Uh, he's going to tell us about the uh, the new Porsche. Taycan. Uh, Mike Gillis is here to talk about the uh, ID4, which is VW's new all electric vehicle and uh, delicious. Yeah. Drove driving that. That's a lot of fun. Kyle Bays, uh, Baysmore joining us from Infinity to talk about the vehicle that's just been released, the QX55. That is pretty amazing. We're going to talk about uh, the all wheel drive capabilities of uh, Lexus IS. Uh, that is also something that I have been very impressed with. And uh, Richard Hollingsworth from Lexus is going to join us. James Bell to talk about the vehicle they just revealed, which is uh, Kia's MPV Carnival. And we're going to find out about a party. They did so well with their Telluride. And I think this is going to do just as well. Yeah, we'll talk about that on today's show. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, Hyundai doing uh, their brand new Kona and Kona Electric. Anton going to join us. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ben Sloss. He's the vice president of Google. And I spent the day at his house in, uh, in California. And I asked him one question. What keeps you up at night? And his answer dropped my mouth wide open and it'll drop yours open too when I tell you what his answer is but yeah, that's all coming up in today he got his brand new Rolls Royce delivered that's why I was there he is probably him and his wife Christine are probably the nicest people I have ever met in the the sort of position that he holds that's cool. completely approachable all right so my friend Perry Stern is on the phone to talk about uh he gets to drive Porsches all the time, and I don't. So I will say there is a there is a degree of jealousy there, Perry, um, on that level. Uh, Porsche are obviously in love with you, and they let you drive all of their <laughs> special cars. So uh, come on, make me green with envy. Tell me about how amazing this new Porsche was. Oh, it was horrible. You would have hated it. <laughs> well, I do feel slightly better now. I feel slightly better. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, it, 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 was, it was surprising. Uh, I had a chance, my first time in the new Porsche Taycan, which is their fully electric sports sedan. And, you know, when it first came out about a year ago, they had, you know, the Turbo S. Don't ask me why it's called the Turbo. It doesn't make any sense, but that's a whole different question. Uh, but that had 750 horsepower, 0 to 60 in under three seconds stupidly fast that's not the one i got to drive uh i drove the uh the new model that just came out which is their entry level model uh it's rear wheel drive only it's the only rear wheel drive tycon you can buy so it only has one motor instead of two uh but it is designed to get more people into the brand so it has a starting price of only seventy nine thousand nine hundred dollars so this is the cheapo model is that what you're telling me uh, if you want to call it that, I will call it that. <laughs> okay. I will call this the entry level. Okay. Uh, I, was being, an idea, though, I was being cheeky there. Anyone is, I was just being cheeky. Yeah, well, if anyone, if, if anyone has ever tried to equip a Porsche 
um, you know, option it out. So this had a few options on it. So the actual price of this car was $110,000. No. Okay. I have to ask, did you get the rose gold color one? It's it, This is actually called Frozen Berry. There you go. Okay. Is that the one you got? It was not attractive. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's very light pinkish. It's kind of purplish, but not quite. It's and this had the the frozen berry interior as well. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm saying all these negative things, and I shouldn't be doing that because the car is actually a blast to drive. There you go. Um, even as the base level model, I mean, so this one has, uh, I believe it's 469 horsepower. Uh, so this is with the extra performance battery, and even with that amount of power, this is the most powerful entry level car Porsche has ever sold. You know, I'm looking at Frozen Berry. I mean, it's different. It might be something that a seven-year-old would choose to color her bedroom in, but it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's mauve looking, mm, at least different. from the pictures here. All right. Let's get on to positive things. Uh, most powerful uh, entry-level car they've ever sold. Is that what you said? I'm just mesmerized by the color. <laughs> Yes, I know. But it is, you know, so once you get inside and get behind the wheel, then you realize it's pure Porsche. I mean, it, it handles so well. Um, it's got that quick acceleration. Uh, you know, you have that instant torque of an electric car. So, you know, when you're going into corners, you can, you know, lift off the throttle and the regenerative braking just slows you enough to get through the corner. So you don't even have to switch to the brake. And then you give it full throttle and that instant torque just shoots you out. It's it's a lot of fun. So it sort of uh, it sort of has wheel drive, it sort of has one pedal driving almost. Almost. So okay. it's not as as regenerative as say like the for, the Mustang Mach E, where it will come to a complete stop when you take your foot off the throttle. The Porsche doesn't do that, uh, but it slows it down enough that you can kind of use that in sporty driving. Uh, and but it, it's you know, and it's, the car has has a good amount of space inside. It's got a front trunk a trunk it's got a rear trunk it's got a nice size back seat you could use it as an everyday car easily now porsche are obviously very good at, at doing uh, rear wheel drive cars they corner really well and then you have this sort of added value in here of of the electric platform which then puts the weight even lower so it sort of doubles down on porsche what porsche is really good at already doing so better than a gas in cornering and driving carving canyon roads I don't know if you can really compare them because the Taycan is a, is a larger vehicle as well. I mean, so it's definitely bigger than a 911, probably closer to a Panamera. Um, but, yes, I would say it's at least on a par than, you know, with a gas-powered model. And the interesting thing is that, you know, Porsche, aside from the Panamera, the 911 and the, the have the engine in the rear anyway, um, kind of like what this Taycan was. So it had a rear motor. Uh, and but it does have you know very good weight balance. It does have the batteries down very low, so you have a low center of gravity, um, which just makes it great fun to drive. All right, let's let's talk about some of the life practicalities of this vehicle. So range, charging time, that type of thing. So they don't have. This is a brand new version of the Taycan, so they don't. They haven't uh, gotten EPA ratings on the range yet. I can tell you that when I was driving it. With about 68% charge left, it still had 170 miles still empty. All right. That's not so, bad. So I'm going to guess you could so get 250. definitely in the 250 range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Um, not, not bad. Not not sweating type. Of, I mean, then probably on, um, you know, city traffic, it'll do better. I like the interior. Definitely. Definitely. I, I may have been a little heavy on the throttle. Okay. Possibly. And then how did you do charging? Did you do, uh, you know, did you plug it into your outside 110 volt or did you get level two? How did you do with that? So the level two charging, if it's completely empty, they say it'll take about 10 hours. Right. Which is not bad. So if you have a level two charger at home, you plug it in, it's charged by morning. Uh, if you have a 50 kilowatt fast charger, you can go from 5% to 80% in about an hour and a half. All right. Um, nope. Not bad. So not, it's not too bad, it, and it can handle, you know, as much as a three, you know, I think 270 or 300 watts uh, or kilowatts if you have a charger of that sort. And in that sense, it'll charge much faster, obviously. I think Jen's pretty um, excited it's about a usable car. Jen's pretty excited about the interior, aren't you? Yeah, I like the way that um, the, 
all the buttons are. There's no buttons. It's all screens. There are no buttons. Exactly. It's got lots of display screens. So yep. no, 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 eating, no eating chips while you drive. That's... <laughs> no, no. Because you don't want to get your greasy fingers all over those screens. Right. But, but there's even a display screen for the passenger. So there's, there's the curved screen for the driver. So it's a curved uh, driver display. Then you have a large screen in, you know, in the center for your normal infotainment system. Then you have another screen that's in front of the passenger where they can adjust audio and things like that. And then there's another screen in the center console down lower where all your climate control information is. Oh. It's, uh, Jen, you can read. Jen, you Jen, really have her. Jen can read from multiple screens when she's uh-huh. in the car. Exactly. <laughs> It's exactly. all right. She throws up when she reads in a car. He, made, Perry. he makes me read to him in, on the way to the to, to the studio, and then she's like, oh, oh, "I'm gonna throw up." I'm like, "I'm done." That's rude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perhaps so, it has to, something to do with the way you're driving, maybe. Well, kind of today both. she told me it wasn't anything to do with my driving. It was because I made her read. Yeah. Uh, Perry, ah, mo- ah. most important question: <laughs> if the money wasn't the object here because you know it always is. But if it wasn't, would you own this car? I would own a variant. I would, if money wasn't an object, I'd want the more powerful ones. Mm-hmm. Right. But I do have to mention that Porsche just this week announced a new version of the Taycan called the Cross Turismo, which is basically a Porsche Taycan station wagon. And Ooh. that's the one I want. Oh, <laughs> yes. Every journalist wants a brown version of that. I can tell you right now, yes. I think green. Oh, or, or it green. It's really nice and green. Yes. Ooh, very cool. All right, Perry Stern, thank you for filling us in on the uh, the that vehicle. Despite its color, we might uh, we might be interested in it. Uh, Perry Stern, read your stuff at MSN and ourautoexpert.com. Thanks, Perry. More to come. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show, our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. Uh, I'm more and more impressed with electric cars as they roll into showrooms. There are going to be about 200 new electric vehicles arriving in the next couple of years. And as they start to come into my driveway for car companies, as car companies send them to me to be test driven, my interest is peaked more and more. And that happened this week. My interest was super, super peaked when I got to uh, have my time with this next vehicle, the ID4 from VW. Now, I've only had less than 24 hours, can't say too much about it, but the man that can give us a complete inside and outside about the vehicle is Mark Gillies from VW. Mark, um, I will say, initial impressions are absolutely amazing. You didn't prepare me quite enough for how great this vehicle is. Um, I have yet to find uh, anything wrong with it. So what is wrong with it? <laughs> uh, I'm probably not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're supposed to it's say perfect. nothing. It's perfect. it's perfect in every way. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think... I think we've got a sort of slightly different philosophy to some other people in the space, you know, the EV space, in that we're going after compact SUV buyers. I mean, we, you know, I think our CEO has said in the past that, you know, we want to make uh, EVs for the millions, not the millionaires. And when you look at the pricing with the tax credit, the car is very comparable with high trim versions of things like the CRV and RAV4. And from my perspective, I've done quite a lot of miles in, in them now, and I think. And the great thing about these skateboard battery packs is that, you know, for a tall vehicle, you've got so much of the weight down low that it gives you a lot of advantages from a, from a dynamics standpoint. Whereas, you know, when you build a <clears throat> compact SUV, you're basically raising the, the, the weight up, and that has some if, if effects that are not necessarily great on, on handling and ride. So from that perspective, I think the car's, you know, very, very successful. Um, you know, it's funny. There's there's been some people complain about the lack of but of buttons and knobs in the cabin. 
But, you know, I actually said to somebody the other day, I said, so you're still using your BlackBerry? I mean, honestly, everybody <laughs> who's... Good one. Yeah, no, nice, nice one. That's great. <laughs> and, and I think that's how, you know, everybody nowadays, you know, one of the things about the, the infotainment on this car is it's voice and touch. And that's how you act with your phones. It's how you, you know, interact with your house nowadays yeah. through Alexa and, and, you know, through Siri and everything. So... Um, I think I think that's the biggest criticism so far has been infotainment system, um, but other than that, it's it's uh, it's I think it's a it's a very solid product, and I think you know it, because it's a because it is like a compact SUV, there's no reason not to ha- go electric with a car like this. The pricing's right, you know we've got free charging with Electrify America for three years, right. Um, and it's got everything you need, and, and it's got a 250 mile range. And most most drivers don't drive 250 yeah, miles. Yeah. Any any one pop. Yeah, and I, I think initial impressions for me. I mean, I've had it less than 24 hours, and um, my initial impressions is how much space there is in each passenger seat. Uh, I must have got into it, and I was thinking, in you know. Initially, I knew it went up where it was in the marketplace, but I was expecting it to be sort of more golf size. And it's not. It's There's so much deceiving. room. There's so much room around each seat. And the trunk. Um, and well, the one, the, the, my only complaint with it is, is probably the trunk is a little high. But I presume the battery is under the trunk. Um, is that is that where the battery lives? No, it, it doesn't actually. The, the battery, the, what lives under, what lives at the back end of the car, is basically the motor and the drivetrain. Okay. So. Okay. Um, the electronics and stuff. The battery is basically contained within the wheelbase. Of okay. The um, actually, it might you know it might it might intrude a little bit. I haven't. I, haven't, I love I'm, it. I've seen them. I've seen them on a ramp, but I haven't looked underneath properly. So, um, yeah. It's uh, to me the elect- and I got it at night, and I ran to the pizza restaurant to get uh, dinner last night for the family, and the ambient lighting, how it looked from the outside at night. Um, it, it was. It's just really looks good. The, the the design from the outside, the exterior lighting, some of the clever design to make the shape look more coupe esque. The 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 sunroof, the glass roof, the the different colored roof. I mean, there's just. I mean, I could go on for, for hours. Um, the the gear shifter being uh, on the column, but a, a different design than I've ever seen before. Um, I think the the large screen, but not being so imposing. It, you know, the screen wasn't the dash which sometimes can be a little bit too much and the color contrasting jen said the seats were the most comfortable mm-hmm. that she's ever sat in a in a vw yeah um i just found the space everybody who rode in the car uh, last night was just impressed with it um yeah i i have yet to find a fault with it really have to i mean the only thing i would say is i was I had a friend call me, um, one of the guys at Fox 5 in San Diego, when he found out I was get, getting it to test drive and said, um, can, you know, can you do a, a FaceTime with me and walk around the car? And I was thinking, here's two girls play soccer and, and the trunk might be a little challenging. But then, you know, uh, but I'm sure it, they could put their gear um, throughout the car. There's plenty of space. Um, when does it go on sale? How much is it? And uh, in, is is the likelihood we have to pre-order to get one? Um, I mean, we've got a bank of pre-orders for sure. Um, the car's basically going to start to be delivered to customers in the next week or two. Um, the base price of the, of the of what we call the Pro, the ID4 Pro, is thirty nine 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 five plus destination. Um, the first edition, unfortunately, which, which is a car that you have, is sold out. Right. <sighs> But the, but the statement edition, that what we call the Pro S, um, that is uh, 40, 44, uh, sorry, 43675, and that's got pretty much everything you would want on the car in terms of equipment. So, you know, and again, you factor in the tax credit plus right. any yeah. local incentives. When can I get it? And it's, um, as I said, it's a couple of weeks' time. Um, the cars are going to start being delivered to customers, but as I said, we have a, we have a sort of three-order bank. Right. Um, you know, so it's 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 going to be available, you know, pretty soon. And then in the summer, late summer, we're going to get the all-wheel drive version um, with, with with around three. Mark, we're uh, we're closely running out of time, but I will I will find more time to talk to you. Thanks, my friend. You're listening to the R Auto Expert podcast. 
This is our Auto Expert Radio Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us, ask us a question, just direct message us at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. All right, well, there's quite an interesting event happened at my house this week. Big old trailer turned up, lots of music and flashing lights, and out of the back rolled a brand new Infiniti QX55. In fact, it happened to 14 people around the country, and uh, we all got the opportunity to spend 24 hours with the latest coupe SUV or crossover from Infiniti, and I will tell you, the experience was quite outstanding. Now, I have a gag order on talking to you about certain things about the vehicle because Infinity would like all of that information to uh, be released at the same time. But a man who doesn't have a gag order, or at least none that I know about, is uh, going to talk to us. Kyle Bazemore here from Infinity. Kyle, uh, this has been quite a long road to unveil this vehicle. I do remember being at the spaceport in, I think, New Mexico when you first showed us the vehicle uh, quite some time ago and uh, finally unveiled and now uh, now allowed to drive the vehicle. Quite a twisty and curvy road to get it into the hands of journalists and then soon buyers as well, right? Uh, hey, Nick, I, it's great to be with you. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we were able to show you the QX55 in prototype form a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, uh, just so we could get a little sneak peek of what's coming from Infinity. And then we had the debut of the car uh, late last year, and now it will be rolling into our showrooms in just about a month. So we're uh, really excited to have our clients uh, take a look at it. It's it's an outstanding design. I have been a fan of the coupe SUV or crossover for many years. And it, it, I think people are divided into two groups. The, uh, they like the traditional SUV or they like the coupe SUV. Which are you, Jen? Are you a traditional SUV or a coupe SUV? I kind of like them both. It just depends See, upon... See, I like the coupe much better. <laughs> and I don't find many people that like them both, except dep- with this. I know. This design is amazing. And this... the interior is just phenomenal. And I like it in the. I had a gray one. Did you? Did the, you have black and white or black and? And I had red red, red interior. Yes, and oh, the brushed look. So nice, oh, so nice. Uh, so let's talk about the outside to start off with, uh, Kyle. Uh, this this sort of has a hint of your FXs, which uh, were a groundbreaking design, but it it's so masculine and shapely, but still has a, sort of a, a hint of sports car as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. So our designers and our fans have always been, you know, really loving the original FX, which we look at as kind of starting the coupe crossover segment. And so we, we took, the, and if you look at the original FX and the greenhouse design, uh, that's pretty much exactly what's on this car. And typically, you know, when you look at a car, maybe your front, the front is what your favorite is. Mine on this car is actually the rear three quarter. I, I love the rear three quarter, the way it comes down. And then the uh, the hatch that's you know kind of a uh, a blank space there for us to have our Infinity logo in the in the center and, and the word mark that goes across. Uh, it, it's really quite a striking design. And you know you you talked about you know pre you know, like a crossover or a coupe crossover. Uh, this one it, it looks like a coupe. It certainly is a coupe. But we were able to retain much of the headroom in the rear. And I, I think that. Um, one of the negatives of this kind of design is that it really cuts into rear uh, headroom. But our designers are able to figure out a way to really keep the, you know, keep the room back there while still having this very you know, sporty coupe silhouette. And the lights. We can't forget the lights on the back end as well, those piano, piano key lights. Uh, they looked amazing. Um, they just, add so much of, depth. Yeah, every detail. It mm-hmm. seems like uh, you, know, you had a team on every single detail. Huge wheels. Right. Uh, milled black wheels, aluminum black wheels look great. Even down to the grill, the uh, origami uh, sort of style grill that you have up front really accentuates that Infinity logo uh, at the front. Um, There's so many details. The hood itself, um, I sort of spent some time looking at the hood. It looks like the hood probably took somebody. It's, it's, 
when I stand there just looking at the herd, it becomes part of the fenders at the edge, uh, whereas you normally would see the fender start on its own at some point. The hood is almost part of the fender. It looks like a happy bear. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it has this sort of very positive uh, feeling to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, some words came to my mind, which was like, it's sort of complex, but it isn't complicated. The right. design is very simple. And this doesn't even get to it until when you get onto the inside of the vehicle. I mean, there's a whole different world on the inside as well. So many lines and shapes and, and design elements there, but it all sort of flows together. I guess this would be the perfect thing to say, this is what the Japanese do really well. You know, they take something that has so many elements and it all seems to go the same direction, right? For sure. And, you know, when you talk about the hood, to me, to my eye, it has very much a wave pattern to it. And, uh, yes, it does wrap around uh, the top of the fender, so you don't have that cut line. Uh, so it, it has a, a look of a, a sheer craftsmanship. On the inside, too, I like the way that, you know, it, it, uh, the, the, the way that the um, – the movement of the console up mm -hmm. around the instrument panel yeah. kind of separates the passengers from the, the driver. So it's like a very driver centric uh, feel to the, to the interior. And lots of, you know, two screens as well. So you can have multiple pieces of information at the same time as it's sort of not that you're right. That even where that line, it comes from the armrest and it travels up there over the screen and sort of has a separation, but it, it almost secretly sort of continues around the gauge cluster as well, sort of mimicking the shape of the steering wheel. Um, and it's the same way with this, the sort of the, the armrest for the passenger side and then the, the piece above it, it travels all the way around, almost like a, sort of the fishbowl idea of the sort of the top of the fishbowl around everybody. Um, every line in it. I mean, I'm impressed. I really am impressed. And it's when so many manufacturers find it so easy to butcher the inside of a vehicle. Um, you know, you guys have done such a great job in really putting a lot of thought and energy into it. And how many ever times I've said, you know, why does it take them so long to bring this car out? You know, we saw the we saw the the concept is or the ideas early on a year ago. I'm still waiting for the 55. Come on, come on. I'm glad I waited because the the end product, although we weren't allowed to look in the inside a year ago, the end product is is absolutely outstanding. And the next part, of course, of the chapter is when we're going to be able to talk about the driving, which we can't do today. But we can mention the fact that this is the application of your uh, variable compression engine. That's correct. Uh, it's the world's first variable compression engine. So it's really the best of both worlds. It's a high compression engine and a, a low compression engine. <clears throat> you know, high compression for economy, low, uh, low compression for performance. And the uh, engine actually decides for you which, which one the driver wants, just through, you know, indication of the accelerator pedal. So... It uh, puts out 268 horsepower. Uh, it's a tw it's a two liter turbo engine, and um, it's it's really peppy and um, and and it, like I said, it, it it has the best of both worlds for the driver. Now I do need to work out how you made the the biggest mistake here, and that is um, you had 14 of these cars to be delivered by this amazing trailer with the music around the world. How did I make the f list of 14? That's a mistake. Yeah, I, I don't understand a, how they made why it. Why was that, that should be an, <laughs> an honor? That's an honor thing, Nick. Well, you know, I was just uh, uh, I didn't realize there was only 14 when I posted it, and uh, ever I didn't understand. I posted, oh look, what happened? Arrived at my house, and then I. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Everybody was on Twitter was like, oh, there was only 14. How did you make the list? I was a bit embarrassed <laughs> because I didn't realize I was. But thank you. Thank you. Much honored. Well, you're very welcome. And I, and I don't mean to uh, burst your bubble too much, but it's 14 a day. So oh, there's 14 okay. Well, cars, I feel better so... about that now. There you go. <laughs> I feel well, better. You're still one of our favorites, Nick. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. So thank you're, you. One of, you're one of the 14. Um, so it is. And, and I genuinely do mean this. I think I enjoyed, uh, definitely wasn't long enough, 24 hours, but I'm sure there will be coming uh, opportunities to spend longer with it once the initial introduction and handshake is over with the... The, uh, the journalist world, um, and I do in, did really enjoy the. I don't know how you decided who got what color 
uh, from the, for, you know, around the country. But being in the northwest of the United States, I thought gray was a very apt color. And it unfortunately did rain the entire time I had the vehicle. So it does, it does do really well uh, with, the, you know, I did turn the windshield wipers on during the rain. And that's not a driving impression. Well, they should have been shooting them on glasses <laughs> for you because they, they're automatic windshield wipers, and uh, it sounds like you got to use the uh, standard all-wheel drive on the car. Right. There you go. Well, I'd, uh, I'd love to talk about that, uh, but uh, it's embargoed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hey, I'm not. <laughs> right. But, um, but, you know, uh, the slate gray is, is how I'm going to order my personal Kia 65. I really love that color, and I especially love it with the way that it was equipped in your driveway with the uh, Monaco red leather inside. So, yeah. It's a it's a really great combination. I love it. I, I think this is definitely a, a very exciting new chapter for you. Um, price and on sale date. Uh, it starts about forty six thousand dollars, and it will be in Infinity Showrooms the first week of April. And so, readily available across the entire country, or our Chicago audience going to have to wait a little longer? Our Florida audience is it? Does it come in from Japan, or is it? Uh, is it going to? It's built. Uh, it's built in Mexico, okay. uh, so we should we expect that everybody, every Infinity retailer, all 204 of them across the country, should have at least one QX55 by the first week of April, for sure. Yay. All right. Well, just telling everybody, if there's one thing that you do in April, I suggest you go test drive this, because it's not a car that I can adequately explain enough on, on the radio. I'm sure you will watch my TV segments across the country and get a better idea, but test driving is the only way to do it. Kyle Bazemore... It's been an honor to have you on the show. And people, honor yourself. Test driving is free. Go do it. We will have more Our Auto Experts. Stand by. It's on the way. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Over 12,000 people have downloaded Our Auto Expert podcast and many more streamers. Join the happy listeners via iHeartRadio, Pandora, the app that is, and of course, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and OurAutoExpert.com. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is Our Auto Expert radio show. Two million Americans get their automotive news daily from Our Auto Expert. You know, I get sent uh, cars from auto manufacturers uh, to test drive and to give my opinion opinion and to do TV and radio segments. And quite often you get a lot of cars that sort of pass under the radar. But one particularly uh, got my attention because I forget sometimes how absolutely outstanding that uh, Lexus vehicles are. And uh, quite often you get, I mean, I own a Lexus. Yeah. Right. But every time you, a Lexus is coming, you're like, Oh, guess what's coming? Yeah, it's I mean, like I, Christmas but, but I, I specifically bought a Lexus, particularly, <laughs> particularly because Lexus vehicles hold their value. They're reliable. But you still and get excited. And they're, and they're just <laughs> nice vehicles. But the IS has been one of my favorite Lexus sedans or cars, I would say, for a long time. And so when this came around, I was excited. And I am still excited about it, even though it has left my driveway. So I'm glad to have uh, Richard Hollingsworth on the phone to talk about the Lexus IS. So all-wheel drive is becoming an absolute necessity as we watch the uh, the weather do very unpredictable things in the uh, United States. But with sedans, even when the weather's good, it just makes the driving performance so much better. And uh, it also has done that with the, uh, the IS. And I'm glad to say that uh, the driving performance was absolutely great for this uh, new 2021 Lexus IS. And uh, it's got that Lexus driving signature as well. But you've made some improvements for uh, 2021. Is that right, Richard? That is correct, Nick, yes, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate it very much. And you, you hit it right at, or at the beginning. The IS has been in the Lexus lineup for 20 years, many generations, but this fourth generation we're very, very proud of because, like you said, it's been uh, developed with that Lexus driving signature, which you definitely feel, like you said, as you're driving, whether in all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive applications, it just connects beautifully to the road and to the from the driver feeling the steering, feeling the suspension. Like you said, we just love not just the exterior look of it, but underneath the platform. It's just fantastic, and I'm glad you've enjoyed it uh, for the time you've had the vehicle. So thank you very much. I think it's it's hard to explain to somebody 
um, from year to year what Lexus do with their vehicles. But they, it's not massive big changes because you tend to have the formula right and you've got everything right. But what you're doing is sort of just improving the grain of sandpaper and getting it a little bit finer and adding and tuning and those sort of things just to get it a little bit closer to perfection. And every time I drive one, the changes are small, and maybe not going from you know, uh, you know, two wheel to all wheel drive, or from from rear wheel to to all wheel drive. But ultimately, they're getting uh, the, which is a big change. But the changes that you make are small, but they're so significant that they're noticeable. And even things like the safety. I mean, you you're making which technically are huge steps in safety. You wouldn't notice them as a driver, but they could make, and, and God forbid that they actually have to be implemented, but they could make a huge amount of difference. And every year you're just making another step forward in, in everything that you do. Um, and if you look at these vehicles from year to year, you might not really notice huge changes, but you're, you're still polishing them every year, aren't you? That is exactly correct. Like I said, from the beginning of Lexus uh, 30 years ago, like I said, we've been di- building the finest vehicles that we can, and every year just do the continuous improvement for the vehicles. But with this IS, yes, it has the Lexus safety system plus 2.5, where you never have to u- utilize any of those safety components, such as pre collision or the intelligent high beams or dynamic radar cruise control. Blind spot is actually standard to the vehicle as well, but we just want to know for customers' peace of mind while they're enjoying the vehicle, feeling that uh, driving sensation, like you talked about, those little connections to the road, we want peace of mind to know that we have them covered not just by the amount of airbags in the vehicle, but all these different safety systems that are standard to the vehicle. Because you said it before, uh, uh, Nick, that you said you, we can replace vehicles left and right, but to replace a Lexus customer, we never have to have to do that. So we want to keep them as safe as possible. And each year, like you said, we bring it in the safety, we bring it in the multimedia with the touchscreen that you were familiar with in this vehicle. All the latest and greatest, like I said, is always that continuous improvement with our Lexus brand. And like you said, 30 plus years as a company, we're very proud of it. We've got all of our vehicles, and we've got the IS being the newest one this generation to the family. So it's been very exciting since the launch of the vehicle, for sure. It's actually interesting that uh, my Lexus is now worth more than I paid for it. Um, in 2018, when I bought my G-Hex, it's worth more because the used car prices are going up so much as well. Jen, you had a question. Uh, yes, I didn't have a question, I had a statement. And, of course, it comes with the F Sport model, which is my favorite. Yes, that's an yeah. option, right? Mm-hmm. But it's still, it still has the F Sport. It's like the ultimate Lexus. That is good. Yeah, so we're except for the 300 models, like you said, those are for our entry level uh, first time buyers uh, into the brand. But for the 350 model for 21 model year, all 350 will be in the S Sport uh, trim. Like I said, you get all the looks of it inside and out. Plus, we have the optional dynamic handling package where it, we bring in the uh, adaptive variable suspension and the limited slip differential. And like I said, it gets the black BBS matte black wheels, 19 inch. So it takes it to not just cosmetically, but underneath the vehicle. Like I said, what Nick advised earlier, it is definitely developed on that Lexus driving signature to enhance the road feel for the for the guests that are behind the wheel and just know that we're taking it to the next level. But not just the luxurious refinements you're, you're accustomed to with Lexus, of course, but now you're getting more and more of that performing right. handling feel with the vehicle. And S-Sport is exactly uh, where we'd like to put it. Now, before we run out of time, because always time was our enemy here, uh, you also have that new uh, multimedia system with the 10.3-inch touchscreen. Uh, what's the starting price? And are the 2021s uh, in dealerships already? Yeah, they are. So roughly around November, we started launching. Uh, they started riding a lot more, so a lot more inventory now at the dealerships. But for the IS300, rear-wheel drive starts at 39000 But for the vehicle you were in, the 350 all-wheel drive Escort, that starts at 44900 And then add a couple of uh, wonderful factory options. But like I said, it'll, and then the price is still very reasonable for the market it's competing in. But definitely, like I said, the dealerships have plenty of different inventory, different uh, wonderful color palettes inside and out, so we can definitely have a IS that suits whatever the needs of the particular guests are, from yourself or Jen, so we definitely have you covered here. All right, Jen, head off to the dealership when the show's over. I want you to buy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll help and me Jen, pay for well, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, thank and you. As, as you know, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, 
because we're crashing up against the news. But uh, Richard, listen, thank you for giving up part of your weekend. Um, happy to be Alexa's customer, and uh, I think you've done a great job with the IS. And uh, thank you. Yeah, the, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, the next uh, little sandpapered version as uh, as you guys edge off uh, uh, some more oh, yeah. portions of your perfection. All right, stand by. We're going to talk about more uh, great cars which are on the way. It's our auto expert. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the Northwest to the Southeast. This is the World's Car Radio Show. It has a throttle. We'll feature it on air online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is Our Auto Expert, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with Truck Girl Jen, who, I will tell you, we have just not even gotten out of the news, and she started complaining. Oh, okay. Yes, just what, a little bit. What are you complaining about now? So the, our next vehicle, which I really am impressed with. Yes. So I, it says, you know, build your own. So I started building my own. Well, first of all, what's the vehicle? Well, I call it the Carnival. You call it the Carnival. Yeah. <laughs> By uh, so this Kia. This is Kia's new vehicle, which we're going to talk to James Bell in just a second I know, about. I'm yeah. excited. So I picked the Aurora Black Pearl, which is beautiful. Yeah. And then I go to pick my interior, which is black and gray and it says sorry this is not an option so you're complaining because you can't have the what black interior and the black pearl yeah. on the exterior yeah it does, says well you can have snow white pearl on the outside all right so let's start at the beginning of the show and then maybe james <laughs> can help you maybe james stand by so kia yes who are one of our favorite automakers they are. well we don't have i mean we don't have any unfavorite automakers if that's really um, a word i'm just making things up here making <laughs> words up here we like everybody on this show uh kia um have had a very successful last few years might be coincidentally since james bell has been the uh, director of communications and social media but who knows uh that's since the most honest thing you've ever said sir. is it is it on most honest thing <laughs> Um, all right. The most honest thing I've ever said, since James Bell has been the head of Kia, they have had a wonderfully successful time. <laughs> they have. And um, they have had the Telluride. They have had, I mean, I could list all, all the vehicles off, but they've had a successful time, and they have just launched a new vehicle, uh, which is called the Carnival MPV. Which I love. Which is not a minivan, as James would like to point out. And I'm sure he'll tell us. it's not an SUV. Uh, it's a, it's a multi passenger vehicle it's mm-hmm. a tweener multi-purpose multi-purpose Ooh, vehicle it's a tweener go. it's a tweener <laughs> um it has sliding doors um it's a party bus it's a it's uh, what it's a carnival it's going to be partying and having fun okay it's a party bus as jen likes to call it <laughs> um and uh it I looked jen style it yeah <laughs> jen's the party girl but don't have a read in the car james because she'll mm-hmm. throw up on you <laughs> Oh. Um, as I found out this morning, uh, so she, uh, so there we go. It, it sort of has some essence of the Telluride. It has some essence of, uh, many other things. It looks very rough, rugged and ready to take on the great outdoors, but yet still the utility of hauling around the rug rats. So it is, it's got all the elements that you might need for a, growing family of adventurers, Mm -hmm. let me just say. And impressed, I will say. I mean, I haven't seen it in person, but I'm impressed with uh, the photographs that I have seen of this vehicle. Um, well, so, I, I know you would expect me to say no, nothing last minute, but I'm actually sitting in one right now. Oh, and, you have to send and us I'm photos. And I'm too. Yeah. <laughs> send pictures. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, sure. I, I am very impressed, actually, James. I really am. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I mean, of course, you've, you know, you've taken stock of how well you've done and uh, you, you've found another way to make a money press. And this is it. Um, and, of course, America wants to, uh, to follow on uh, with what you did with the Telluride and what you've done with some yep. of the other impressive but vehicles. But it's so unique. Like the way that the front end is, it's, I don't think it looks like the other vehicles. I don't, personally yeah. don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, the funny thing is, I was talking to the, uh, the designers about this the other day, and uh, in fact, 
uh, Nick, I'm, we're going to be sending uh, both of you a, a podcast that we recorded with the designers. Oh, cool. That is um, kind of goes into some of these things. So I'll just give you a little sneak peek on it. But they said that they, when they were designing this vehicle, they were also working on the Telluride, the Sorento, and some future SUV stuff. So there was, a, as they said, there was a lot of SUV in the air. And um, so it wasn't so much a an intentional let's run away from minivan. It was let's do a multi-passenger vehicle or purpose vehicle that looks good, mm-hmm. that has what people like already. So, you know, uh, it, it, was, it was, and, and because our role in the, in the minivan segment is small, we have a chance to do things differently. And, and so that's where it kind of came from. It wasn't a, um, you know, a, uh, any bold, uh, category, uh, categor- what am I trying to say? Catalogical, like, let's just do something completely different here. It's, this is what we do, so let's do it again and let's do it well. I right. guess that's the best way to say it. Right. No, I, I think I will tell you something that, I mean, I'm <clears throat> super being honest. I've, I've always been a little, I've always wanted to see a little more Telluride in everything you've done because that vehicle mm-hmm. really did it for me. And, I, and when, when your vehicles come out, they've always been very, very nice. And I think you've done a great job with them. But I've always said, more Telluride, more Telluride, because that, that spoke to me. And I got it. This time, I definitely got it. Like, I, re- I really, really did feel that I wanted to see more rugged and more sort of square front. And I mean, I, you know, like I'm a Land Rover fan anyway. I've always liked that sort of thing. And this, I really got it. What are you, lo- what, what? Were what you, are you complaining what, what about? What model are you looking at? I don't know. That's totally different than the one I have. Well, I'm sorry. I'm it, looking at the LX seat package. It's beautiful. All right. Look, I don't know. J- Jen's at, complaining at my screen. I don't know what's wrong my, with her. My, my vehicle's better that I have oh, on my okay. screen. <laughs> okay, good. Glad, glad you're, you're happy. You're both good. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I, I'm really... I, this, to me, I'm super, super impressed with it. I've always complained that they never made a an SUV that had sliding doors. Well, now I need to shut up because clearly you have something that's exactly in the marketplace that, I don't know, checks all the boxes. Any, nobody can well, say there's nobody ever made the. The only thing that's now missing in my life is a, is a, a vehicle with a coffee maker in it. So that's the only thing left on the list that you have to do now. Okay, need... <laughs> duly noted. I'll speak to the product planners. <laughs> you, you know, here, here's the funny thing about it. So I've had the, the new Carnival here now in my house for about a week, and it's the only vehicle I've been driving around. And there's two things about this style of vehicle that have really jumped out at me. First right. off, just how damn easy they are. Mm-hmm. They're easy to climb in and out of. As you say, the, the sliding doors, there's no trouble in parking spots. I walk up with the key in my pocket. The sliding door opens up right away. The tailgate opens up right away. I mean, it's just simple. There's just a an element of um, I don't have a limitation in a vehicle like this. Okay, can I go climb uh, rocks at Moab? No. But who's doing that? Nobody. Right. So let's, let's be honest about it. So, so there's just the simplicity in the vehicle. The other thing that struck me was uh, a week before, last week, before I got this car, I, but I was thinking about the fact that I was going to have it, Coming soon, I had to go to Lowe's, and I watched this poor guy trying to put a four by eight sheet of plywood on top of his Tahoe. Right, and that struck me as somewhat contradictory as right. to what we're supposed to be doing with these vehicles. Right, and and of course with a, a vehicle with the with the boxing kind of uh, caliber of this one, uh, a four by eight will slide right in, no problem. Put the seats down, away you go. So again, there's a, a simplicity, uh, um, uh, you know, and, and simplicity is luxury. And I right. think that's where what, if, if people don't feel the stigma, which is so darn silly, uh, and I say that for any, uh, quote, minivan, um, uh, Sienna, Odyssey, Pacifica, anything. Yeah. If you get past that, you're going to get a vehicle that's actually going to be a heck of a lot more rewarding in your day-to-day exploits than a high-riding, tough-to-climb-in-and-out-of SUV. It's I, just it's yeah, just the way it is. I agree. And I think one of the problems with minivans is somewhat they are a little emasculating for dads. I mean they right. you know they, they right. love they love the capability. All dads love minivans for what they do for them, but they don't love to drive them to the school line because it's well, just it's just not cool, right? And so dads that, like to, to be that cool. Point, Nick, to that point, Nick, I wanna give you a little another uh, sneak peek at, at this podcast we're gonna send you. It uh, the the ch- chief designer for the vehicle 
um, he is, is just recently married, and so he was given this vehicle's job. And you would think, well, no, maybe I want a guy who has four kids and dogs and already. No, the thinking was let's give the task to a guy who is designing a vehicle that he will want to drive right. in the future. Right. That has has that has enough spirit for who he is today and who he will be in the future and what he'll need in the future. And so I think that was actually quite a, a bold stroke on behalf yeah. of designers to to allow this uh you know, I think he's thirty two, recently married, uh, you know, has a cat. <laughs> right. So he does not need a vehicle of this nature today, but right. he will. Yeah. So now he's designed one that he'll be he'll feel cool driving in. That's what you call forward thinking. We're running out of time, James. I really want to spend another um, 45 minutes talking with you about this, and we need to have more time to talk about it. But, um, and I'm also thinking about this is the perfect vehicle for a couple of guys who have five dogs. Just saying. Um, when oh, when does it go on? What you're saying? Though. When does it go on sale? And um, how much is the starting price? Starts um, in the mid. 35, kind of 36 range for, again, given that it's Kia, it's fully loaded up. I mean, there's right. very few things missing. Right. Uh, then it tops out at about 48 for the SX Premium that has these fantastic lounge seats. Uh, okay. You can recline all the way back. It's a Vegas, it's a Vegas runner. It's perfect. Awesome. And when, when, um, when, when? Go was on sale in about five or six weeks. When, and the biggest question is, when am I going to get to drive one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, very, very soon. We are going to, well, when you get the podcast, you're going to get keys to the car the same day. How about that? I like that. And I like the way you think. I like the way you think. (laughs) And, um, I like the way that I like the fact that you guys are about four steps ahead of everybody else. I like Mm -hmm. that too. Don't tell them. So listen, if they can't work it out, it's not my problem. I'm just saying, <laughs> really, if uh, they, you know, it's all public domain. If they can't work it out, it's nobody's fault but their own. So there you go. I like this advantage. Um, James Bell, you are uh, a very, very clever man and uh, very entertaining to have on the radio show. So I thank you for giving up some part of your weekend. I, I hope we will enjoy more time together. Good. Well, let's do it soon. I mean, listen, I get a call from you so rarely. And, and it, oh, it's oh, here we go. So let's do it more often. <laughs> James, nice to talk to you. Our auto expert. It's going to be more on the way. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show. Our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. One of the first, and definitely uh, the first, uh, very nicely designed small electric uh, vehicle, or SUV, was the uh, Hyundai Kona. Um, the 2022 Hyundai Kona and Hyundai Kona Electric are just hitting uh, dealerships in the next uh, short while. And the, the redesigned versions have uh, just been announced. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to uh, have somebody on to talk about them. Uh, the assistant manager of uh, product planning, uh, Melvin uh, Bautista, is joining us on the phone. So. Uh, the redesigned uh, versions of uh, both of these vehicles. I will say, first of all, uh, the Kona is uh, is probably one of the most standout vehicles in its class. The, the design definitely uh, jaw-dropping. So w- as far as the, the Kona's redesign for 2022, what's changed with the vehicle? So definitely um, a lot of changes that we have very excited about this wonderful product. Um, You know, for this redesign, we did a lot of changes on the front and rear fascias, uh, new headlamps, uh, new grill, new wheels. And uh, a big difference was also on the interior where we added a lot more of uh, high tech feel uh, features like a a 10.5 inch um, navigation system and also a 10 and a quarter inch uh, digital instrument cluster, as well as uh, new fabrics and new consoles just to give the interior a little bit more of a progressive kind of modern and um, modern appearance to it. So this is sort of a mid, we call this a mid cycle refresh. Is that the correct terminology? Yes, that's the, yes, that's the internal term. Yes. 
All right. Uh, the, the, I mean, the Kona Electric as well has been probably, uh, you know, when so many car companies are designing uh, or had designed these uh, small electric vehicles that were very, very unappealing. The Kona, for me, was definitely one of the first vehicles to come along where I actually wanted to own one. Uh, because uh, it was an electric vehicle that actually looked nice. Well, and they have special colors, too. That yes. Oh, that's right. Come on, I want to lick your lime. Yes. I mean, you call it lime <laughs> twist, but we always we always used to call it come on, uh, Kona want to lick your lime. Kona want to lick your lime. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah, and, you know, actually, for this mid-cycle refresh, uh, we've actually gone away with the lime, but oh. uh, we have a lot of new exciting colors. The blue. I'm kind of really... Really going towards the name of the car, um, you know, we have a new uh, green teal aisle color, and then there's also a, a blue wave color, mm-hmm. and also a cactus fern color that really look um, very exciting when you look at the vehicle, and it really helps the vehicle stand out, um, you know, from the other, from the other competitors. So uh, t- tell us some stats about the electric too, because when the electric space is filling up so fast, there's all these new electric vehicles coming out. You know, VW now have their ID4, which is highly impressive, although it's a, it's a little bigger than the Kona. Um, uh, everybody's uh, launching. You know, there's a new uh, Bolt EV and EUV. Uh, everybody's launching them. Uh, what are the stats on how the electric vehicle does for how the electric Kona does um, with charging and price and those sort of things? Does it, does it compete well with its, its stable mates or its competitive uh, classmates? Yeah, absolutely. And it was actually when we launched the vehicle first in 2019, it was a very breakthrough um, technology with just the overall range and the power that we were able to get uh, on this fun little Kona. Uh, So basically, you know, from an all electric perspective, you're getting well over 250 miles on a full charge. Um, You've also got over 200 horsepower um, being put out from the electric motor and a, a little bit under 300 foot pounds of torque that really make it a fun kind of zippy ride on the vehicle. Um, you know, talking about the charging aspect of it, it's got a 7.2 inch on uh, 7.2 uh, onboard charger system uh, and basically a, a 64 kilowatt battery pack. But one of the amazing things is when you have the ability with these level three quick chargers to get 80 uh, percent charge in under uh, 50 minutes um, and giving you, again, um, you know, close to about 240 uh, miles um, when you're at 80 percent. So. A very breakthrough at the time, and um, you know now it's basically the same carryover system because it's actually done really well for us. Um, but at the same time, with the new design and you know with some of the new enhancements that they made, to just overall ride comfort and suspension and, and chassis um, enhancements, it, it really is a really fun little car to drive. And and, and like you said, uh, it really kind of it's an SUV that's not boring to look at, and it's very fun, blast to drive, and that really catches a lot of eyes um, when it's on the road. Awesome, and uh, and then you still eligible for the uh, to the seventy five hundred dollar federal tax credit? Yes, it is. No, that's good because you know some other car companies have already used that one up, and uh, then the the gas version as well. Um, is that uh, is that available now, or when does that come to market? And what's the starting price? Yeah, so basically, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be the same. Um, timing as the electric vehicle. And uh, basically, you know, with the gasoline version, um, you know, it comes standard with a two liter um, engine with a, with a new uh, IVT, intelligent uh, variable transmission. And then also um, we have a new exciting N-Line Sporty trim uh, oh. that we're going to be introducing. Uh-huh. And uh, that's really where, um, you know, the brand and, and the N-Line brand has really taken off and we're starting to introduce uh, these N-Line models on, on several of our other vehicles. Um, but yeah, basically, it's got more of a, a motorsports-inspired, um, you know, design and, and, and unique parts to it, and unique badging, um, which really kind of stands out, uh, especially with the available, you know, high-tech features uh, that are in. It. Usually, you know, not really found in this type of class of vehicle. Right, right. That was going to be my my last question. Your secret weapon, Albert Bierman, because uh, but you know, he, obviously, he's uh, he's able to help you get to it towards his end line. So the end line for the Kona. Um, uh, is that coming at the same time or is that a little way off in the future? 
No, it's a little bit off. It's only a couple of months later um, than the start of, um, you know, release for the gasoline version as well as the electric version. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be out very shortly after. Hopefully you can uh, reserve some track time for me with that when you do a, when you do a track day because I'd like to. Oh, we will uh... definitely, definitely <laughs> will have that for you, Nick. It'll be waiting with your name on it. Or, or I'll, oh, I'll take a so trip sweet. down to the Mojave Desert, you know, to your proving grounds. There because, you, you know, as long as, as, long as uh, Albert can help me get around the track. <laughs> Uh, listen, thank you for giving up, uh, uh, Melvin, part of your weekend. Uh, it's always good to talk to you, and uh, I'm excited to test drive these vehicles when they become available. Of course, the uh, Hyundai Kona, it was fun driving in Hawaii, and I can't wait to drive the new one. All right, our auto expert will be right back. Stand by. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Over 12,000 people have downloaded our Auto Expert podcast. Uh, you can do the same thing. Join the happy listeners via iHeart Radio's uh, radio app for podcasts. You can also do it via the Pandora app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and ourautoexpert.com. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is our Auto Expert radio show, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Of course, he tends to join us every week because we invite him, and we're glad we do. He is an independent analyst and investor. He writes mainly for Seeking Alpha and The Street. You are welcome to go and read his articles there. His name, Anton Wallman, and this week is no exception. Now, Anton, uh, let's delve into some of the uh, topics of the week. Uh, we are now uh, months, uh, not years, away from the tipping point where we will no longer be able to rem remember all the EVs that are coming onto the market. Every brand will have uh, so many, will have so many of them, uh, too many to keep track of. So, uh, you know, this week I got uh, the opportunity to be in the ID4. Um, we, you know, of course, have a few more that are at the tipping point to actually arrive in the next few weeks or so. Um, and, and then, of course, Europe is leaps and bounds uh, ahead of us. Uh, let's just take a quick stock. Who are the next few uh, brands to arrive in the United States that we can look forward to? Well, I mean, you brought up the uh, Volkswagen ID4, and you may recall here just over the last barely 24 hours that Volkswagen made a very unusual announcement on the electric car front, and that is that they uh, came out with a press release talking about a car that will not hit the market until, uh, and I hope you're sitting down, 2026. It, they call it the Project Trinity. And so look at what's happened here. Uh, Volkswagen has barely launched its big leap into the all-electric future with the so-called MED architecture for the masses, uh, led by the ID3 in Europe and now the ID4, which is just about on the cusp of launching here in the United States, as well as uh, having just launched in Europe over the last couple of months. And uh, they are already talking about the car that's coming out in 2026. I don't think this has ever happened, Nick, ever in automotive history that I can recall wow. that a company goes out and pre-announces basically a car that is so far ahead of production that uh, we're practically a world war away between now and then. <laughs> so uh, you may, I think the closest we can come to, and at that point it was a bit of a sleight of hand, was when we were sitting in Detroit in January of 2017, or was it 2016? Maybe it was 2017, January, and the, the, uh, the CEO Ford came out and said, we're, we're bringing the Bronco back, and everybody thought, uh oh two and a half years maximum and of course um, the big bronco has yet as of uh, this recording uh, been delivered to any u.s customers we're still a few months away from that so uh, volkswagen is now uh, taking this to the extreme and talking about a car that uh, probably our grandchildren will get to drive so ultimately perhaps they're doing this for what reason um, are they trying to do a preemptive strike on technology or set the bar what do you think the reason is I think it is a combined set of financial and political virtue signaling. I think that they are jealous and, um, frankly, almost angry 
of all of these little electric startup companies that haven't produced as much as a uh, you know a toy car at this point in in, in uh, production volume that are getting valuations that are in the many tens of billions of dollars within spitting distance of giant Volkswagen itself, which is generally producing just over 10 million cars per year. Of course, 2020 was a, a hair lower, but they'll be coming back here imminently. And uh, they're saying, look, we're, we're, we're a car that is uh, producing it, and we're a company that is producing vehicles at, at the highest clip of anybody in the world, and we're doing so profitably. And they have these little companies that are basically uh, like selling fresh air out of a bottle, and they're getting a valuation that's almost as large as ours. We have to start talking about uh, some of the things that uh, get investors very excited. And, oh, by the way, in do so doing, maybe we can please the politicians, too, since we uh, apparently have them as our new constituency as well. But there is also a lot of things moving extremely fast. I mean, I could just uh, take you back to uh, Chevrolet's uh, announcement of the Bolt, the Bolt uh, and the EUV and the EV. And they announced it on a Sunday night. And the following Monday, uh, you know, eight days afterwards, they had journalists in California driving it. I mean, that's pretty unheard of. Usually it's sort of, uh, you know, an unveiling and then uh, several months later you get to drive it. I mean, it's never as accelerated as that usually. It's usually, uh, you know, the pace of things in the past has been very different. And you could put it down to COVID, you could put it down to, you know, pressure, but things tend to be speeding up as far as electric cars are concerned. And, And we're hearing about vehicles that are getting ready to come to market years earlier than they were originally planned, um, whereas it's always usually years later than they were originally planned. Um, people moving their, their vehicles forward and uh, changing it, and maybe it's because of a change in politics, but there's definitely something going on. Oh, it's true, and also different automakers have um, executed faster than others. I think GM is actually the best example of somebody who's ex- executed very fast. Uh, back in January of 2016, we saw this bolt at the Detroit Auto Show, and um, uh, it got delivered uh, even earlier than they had promised. This thing was on the road in like November of 2016. So uh, GM has a way of actually getting an actual production vehicle with quality into real production on a regular assembly line that is not a tent or some other nonsense in small production. Uh, so GM is the best example out there coming out to something quick. The GMC Hummer that is currently being baked in the oven, I mean, it has a, a development schedule that is almost completely unheard of. I mean, they showed this car just a few months ago, and uh, right now, I mean, they're still promising first delivery taking place in December this year, which uh, will defy almost all laws of gravity with, when it comes to testing and quality and validation, and we can only hope that it will have as good a quality as the previous GM vehicles that have come out and really have not had any quality issues when they've come out. So that is one type of example on one side of the ledger, whereas other companies, be it Volkswagen or Ford or others, they have promised a date, and in the end, they fell short of those timelines. So and not all automakers are executing to the same uh, degree. It might be a different story when it comes to sales, especially in Europe after a radical increase in in, in, in battery electric vehicles or BEV's sales in 2020, especially December. The market has taken a pause in the first 65 days of 2021. Even if we, uh, you know, we, we talk about it, I mean, automakers exhausting their BEV sales in December. Uh, They've they sort of taken a pause. Uh, will it come back soon? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, I mean, it'll come back progressively as the year uh, progresses. And the reason here is that the European regulations, they have an annual target. You don't get a special award, a special participation trophy or anything else if you deliver the car in January as opposed to December. As long as you've delivered the requisite quantity by December 31st, you are good. You are not getting any special prize to do it earlier. So it should almost be no surprise that uh, the automakers, just like uh, our uh, best college students, uh, tend to cram everything else to the end uh, for all sorts of uh, reasons, good and bad alike. And we're seeing that here where you're going to see all of the EV deliveries being very, very back-end loaded. And uh, during earlier parts of the year, we're going to see a greater proportion of, uh, of these other uh, types of electrified cars, like regular hybrids that, you know, a market that Toyota has dominated historically, but may not do so necessarily going forward. They have a far more even sales progression throughout the calendar year. 
Now, you know, last question, I guess. Uh, we see a lot of action on Ford, with Ford and, and electrics. We see a lot of action in General Motors with electrics in the United States. But Stellantis, well, they've got that <clears throat> Chrysler, uh, their, their plug-in hybrid minivan, and they've got that Jeep 4xe, but they're small potatoes, Compared to what Ford and GM are doing, is is there anything on the horizon for them? Yeah, so really, uh, they made a different bet a few years ago, for which they have been paying over the last two years. They made the bet that they thought that the regulations were, would basically either uh, loosen up from the worst-case scenario or otherwise get rolled back at least a little bit. Well, it turns out that they haven't thus far. And in the meantime, they essentially had to eat crow by paying primarily Tesla for these emissions credits for which they are paying now to the tune of about $2 billion over a three or four year period in grand total, uh, essentially in lieu of otherwise having to pay fines that would have been even greater sums than that. So they just made the bet that they thought they would be making it to the, these goals and that the goals would be uh, rolled back or being set lower. And uh, thus far, that bet did not uh, work out. So that's really the story behind it. But we're also seeing Stellantis launching plug-in vehicles in Europe that are not yet available in the U.S., such as the plug-in hybrid versions of the Compton's and the Renegade, as well as the all-new generation of the Fiat 500e. None of those three vehicles are sold on North American soil, uh, and uh, that makes us here in North America look at the situation slightly differently than it may be looking in Europe. Uh, in Europe, for example, uh, the uh, plug-in hybrid versions of the Renegade and the Compass have been uh, become almost bestsellers in their respective classes in a couple of southern European countries over the last couple of months. Uh, so it looks like there may be some sort of plan B anyway for them, at least uh, in the future as well. Anton Woolman, uh, he is an independent analyst and investor. Seeking Alpha is uh, where you can read some of his stuff or the street. Uh, do do that because there is uh, very little chance you'll find anybody who is as well versed in uh, those topics, especially in the business of uh, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, electrics, or electrics, autonomous vehicles, and of course uh, the business of uh, those companies who uh, involve themselves in that as well. We invite him all the time to uh, be a mouthpiece for those industries on our radio show, and we enjoy it. Thank you, Anton. There is more Our Auto Expert on the way. Wait till you hear the story I have to tell you. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. This is Our Auto Expert show, radio show. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us and ask a car question. Just direct messages at Our Auto Expert. Of course, this is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. So this week, I had the honor of being with Rolls-Royce, and uh, they were delivering a brand new car to one of their customers who had bespoke this vehicle. And uh, bespoking, of course, means ordering the vehicle to your absolutely perfect um, specifications. Color, specifications. Yeah, everything. Yes. How would you bespoke a vehicle? Oh, wow. Well, of course, special color, um, special interior. Actually, I just started from the beginning down <laughs> right so yeah materials or everything everything you know, materials colors you know yeah. what would you have the uh, the, the truck, color you'd have a truck bed in the back <laughs> of a rolls royce no spare tires rolling around the bed no <laughs> <laughs> um we'd well, have to be a truck girl rolls royce yeah so you'd have to have that um, well, we'll so, so you can order everything. You can have silk or you can have, you know, we can have whatever you want. You can yes, use leather. I mean, it's mostly colors rather than mm -hmm. materials, that sort of thing. But so this individual, his name is Ben Sloss. You can go and look him up. And his wife, Christine Sloss, they both ordered the vehicle. Now, they ordered a Rolls Royce Cullinan. And the, the Cullinan uh, came out in November 2019. So he ordered it then. That was about 18 months ago. So 18 months ago, he ordered the vehicle. So it has taken, uh, you know, that long to build and, and design. And he'd worked very hard about... What uh, color? Well, there's a I whole know, long so story. Excited. Okay. It's, so it's a whole long story. It's going to take me about four hours to tell it. So Great. just settle down. You only have eight minutes. Um, <laughs> the, 
And and this will floor you. This whole story is um, amazing. And 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 I, I'll get to the first sort of culmination of the story because I asked Ben a question, and the question just completely floored me. So. I was lucky enough to be invited to um, spend an afternoon at this house. And um, Should you explain who Ben is to people yeah, who may not I, I know? Yeah, I will get there. <laughs> well, I, you want to finish the story? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you to finish the story. Ben is the vice president of engineering at Google. And he doesn't like to talk about his job or his wealth. Um, I think I read at some point he had 186 cars in his collection. Um, his, the house he actually lives at full time is is about the same house, same size as my house. It's worth about I don't know thirty times as much I was gonna say, <laughs> as my say. house. Uh, but it, it's a significantly nice house, and it's on the beach. Um, it's, it's beautiful. But he's he is one of the most approachable guys I've ever met. You could walk over with him and um, just start a conversation. So pleasant, and his wife Christine, so wonderful. I walked in, uh, and there's a lot of people. You know, there's probably another six people there. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Hi, Nick. Could I get you a cup of coffee? Do you, you know, do you want to, you want anything?" And I was actually more excited um, to meet Bailey, who was their uh, golden Labrador. He is, or you know, yeah. yellow lab, whichever you like. He's he's just so fun. And um, just a wonderful dog. And we, we were there to, to deliver the car. And I'd been granted this great opportunity to do an interview with Ben. And I don't want to come off as being a bit of an idiot. So I'd done as much research as I can and things. I didn't want to sort of be inappropriate. I wanted to ask all the right questions. Mm -hmm. So I thought very carefully about asking the right questions and I wanted to keep them car-based. Ben and Christine are both very, very accomplished race car drivers. Um, Christine has gone faster than Ben. She's uh, Good for her. over 200 miles an hour. Um, she's, you know, driven on NASCAR tracks. Um, she's quite an accomplished. She has her own monogram, which was uh, stitched into the, the doors, interior doors of the Rolls Royce. And it's her monogram, not her. not what you think. It's not a helmet or anything like that. Her racing monogram is a stiletto. Nice. And the first thing that astonished me is it's on both doors. So this is a family car, and it's on both doors, a stiletto. I thought that was really amazing, yeah. really amazing. And you can see it. It's the first thing when you walk up to the car, you can see it on the inside. Beautiful car. I'll talk about the car in a second. Mm -hmm. So after all the handover had taken place, and, and Ben was in a lot of meetings, and he's working from home, obviously. We're all wearing masks and that sort of thing. So the cameras are all set up. TV crews are ready to go. My, everybody's microphoned. And Ben and Christine uh, were sitting on the tailgate, and I came out, and I, everyone's ready for me. And I came out to do the interview, and... I asked a few questions. Then I asked the one question I thought an awful lot about. And the question was, Ben, what keeps you up at night? Is it the lug nuts, the wrong <laughs> lug nuts on the, on the race car? What, it, what keeps you up at night? And Ben's answer is the one thing that I did not expect, and it floored me. His answer was, if I make the wrong mistake at work today, somewhere north of Two billion people will be without their Gmail services. Yeah, that's a lot of angry two people. <laughs> billion people would lose Gmail because he made a wrong mistake at work today. That puts your life in perspective mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. um, I will post the story, the video story we did with him tomorrow, but it is an amazing car. It's so beautiful, it's colored, and it's dark blue with yellow accents, it is, uh, it's got wonderful uh, massage seats that Christine says is great. She's already used it to go get firewood. <laughs> they right put on. their bikes in the back. Bailey, the, uh, the Labrador, loves the car. Um, 
I asked them, did they, you know, they listen to music when they're cars and and do they, what music they listen to? And Christine listens to uh, smooth jazz a lot of the time. Ben listens to uh, a lot of house Mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes 80s music. I asked them, Ben, if he does does karaoke in the car, does he sing along? (laughs) And he said, no, he doesn't sing, but sometimes he plays air drums at the traffic lights and then he gets honked at because he forgets he's playing air drums. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and people ask him to move on. Um, it, it, there really are. He's, he's really interesting. He sells his cars if he doesn't enjoy driving them. And okay. so he, so what he, should do. he says if he's driving a car around and he no longer enjoys driving it, he doesn't drive it. He, 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 call, he doesn't call himself a car collector. He says, I'm not a collector. I'm an enthusiast. There you go. If I have a car in my collection that doesn't get driven... It doesn't belong in my collection. So, wonderful man. Really wonderful experience. Look for the interview at ourautoexpert.com. I will post uh, the television segment, which uh, will go live, I think, probably um, in the next couple of days. We'll post that. I look forward to joining you again. If you want to hear this show or any other of our shows, ourautoexpert.com. There's 141 of them. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Our Auto Expert with Nick Miles. Find all the show episodes at ourautoexpert.com. Please follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Our Auto Expert. And message us for a quick and witty response.